All right. Well, good morning, uh, everyone. There's uh, people here from all over the Southland Division. Happy Fourth of July, celebrating uh, the signing of our nation's Declaration of Independence, and uh, one of my favorite holidays. It's my favorite holidays for a lot of reasons. Um, specifically, in the Cutco business, my very first grand day that I ever had in 1988 was on the Fourth of July. So uh, I know that people can uh, do business on the Fourth of July. Uh, I have quite a few just little various nuggets in several different categories, I suppose you could call it, um, on how to maximize today if you're planning to do some work. Um, I, I would not recommend, by the way, to work all day every day. It is a holiday, and uh, one of the cool things about a job like this is that we can be flexible, and we can uh, you know, take some time and visit family and uh, you know, enjoy the, the fruits of a job that has some flexibility. So. I'd encourage you to take advantage of that. So first of all, I'll just establish this. If somebody happens to have a mindset that it might be hard to make sales on the 4th of July, um, it's not any harder than any other day. I mean, there's pros and cons to you know the 4th of July. There are not just, I was gonna say dozens, there are hundreds and hundreds of people that have had grand days on, probably thousands of people that have had grand days on the 4th of July. Um, you can just check the FSM Magic Facebook page, look at, 2019 and you'll see uh, I asked the question on there uh, give me some grand day on the 4th of July stories and there's bunches of them there was one I read I don't know if it was this year's or last year when we did it someone had 20 a $21,000 day on, on it um let me hold on I can share my screen because I have this thing uh I won't share my screen on it uh yeah I will it's right here I gotta get close uh and you can see this um, pretty remarkable. Uh, let's see here. So this is last year, June 24th of last year, uh, and they were getting ready for the 4th of July. Um, oh, Tyler did four that day in his fast start. Oh, at a grand day as a part of a $21,000 fast start. Okay, maybe I misread that. Uh, he went on to sell 50, 50K for SC2. Okay, so uh, that SC2 in the, in the different part of the country is during this time right now. Uh, Phil Bolander, I had a grand day three of the four Fourth of July that he worked as a rep. Um, sold four. Oh, here's one. I sold 14k two years ago on the fourth, and last year I sold 4,000 on the fourth. I don't know exactly how you sell 14k, but that's some serious sellage. It must be a big family reunion or something that goes on. Uh, my first summer, I went four for four, sold three homemakers, $2,500 day, and I only sold 10,000 for the whole summer. So 25% of it was my was sales that summer. Um, anyway, there, there's obviously lots of uh, lots of examples. You know, sold a flatware set uh, and an upgrade, got fed on the appointment as well. Win win. All right. So there's a lot of uh, examples of people eating barbecue and selling Cutco. All right. So first of all, let me uh, let me talk about a few different a, a few different various things. Uh, I would almost put this in the form of a do's and don'ts on how to how to sell on, on today. Um, and so I might just use that as a kind of a format. Uh, first of all, you might have appointments today. Uh, if you have an appointment in the morning, okay, the 4th of July is a really great day to do a technique. You can do this anytime, on any, any day of the week, any day of the year, uh, but it's called a piggyback technique. And so a piggyback technique is this, when you do an appointment for someone in the morning, right? And I remember a girl when I was a rep, her name was Courtney. And she was an FSM. And back in the 80s, there weren't a lot of FSMs. Okay, like right now there's all these amazing FSMs that sell like crazy. But it was not, it was kind of rare that someone would sell a second summer. It was usually a one summer thing. And then if someone liked the company, liked the business, they would end up going into management because there was there's so many openings for management. Um, but uh, this girl named her name was Courtney. And she talked about this one time, this piggyback pick thing. She said, Yeah, I typically just schedule one demo a day but I can usually do three or four. And I was like confused by that. And so she would say, yeah, it's, I try to schedule one in the morning. I'll try to schedule one in the morning somewhere, somewhere between you know, uh, eight o'clock and you know, 9.30. And then after I do it, when I get my recommendations, I'll just say, hey, Mrs. Jones, I've got an opening right now. Do you know anybody around here who lives close that I might be able to do an appointment for? And the custom, she was really good at building a good rapport with the customers and people wanted to help her. So she would, the customer would call somebody right then, somebody near a, na a next door neighbor, uh, and it, and, or just walk them to, the, to a neighbor's house. Well, the reason it's really great to do that on the 4th of July is because 
people are home on the 4th of July most of the time. You know, you, you got two, two kind of people. You got people that are out of town on a, some kind of trip, visiting family somewhere, camping. And then you got people that are just home. And, and the vast majority of people are just home during the day uh, on the 4th of July. And they do, they, they do barbecues and things like that in the, in the afternoon or in late evening. Or some of them don't even do a barbecue. They just go uh, to watch fireworks in the evening. And some people don't even do that. They just stay home all day, right? Because they, maybe they work a lot. And this is a good time for them just to kind of to, to chill. So the piggyback technique is a really terrific technique on days like today. When you've got those customers uh, that really like Cutco and they like you and they're giving you recommendations uh, or no, we don't call them recommendations anymore, right? Introductions, uh, giving you introductions and you can just ask them for an, an immediate appointment with someone that they know and they will call and schedule it. Jason Guerrero, who I see on here, he did an appointment on Sunday and he said, I'm going to try to get this customer to schedule some appointments for me. Right. And sure enough, he came back, he, he left the phone jam, came back to the phone jam at the very end. And he said, yeah, my customer scheduled four appointments for me. Now they weren't immediate appointments, but they still were considered piggybacking, piggybacking appointments that where the customer can schedule appointments for you before you leave their house. Right. We get them the text message a lot of times, but it's even more effective if you got that customer that really likes you. They just say, gosh, is there any way you could help me schedule a few more appointments to just help me reach my goal? And you can make that happen. Okay, so there's one technique right there, just a simple piggyback. Now, I know that's not uh, selling at a family gathering necessarily, but it's a way to, uh, a technique to use on a day like today. Uh, so let's jump into family gatherings. One of the things that you, 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 like you can't affect now, if, if you're watching this recording and it's way before the fourth and you're preparing for a fourth, uh, well, maybe you have time to do this, but I would, I would increase the number of knives you have in your samples. I would try to get to the point where you've got a barbecue tool set and you've got a barbecue knife, otherwise known as a gourmet prep knife or a hearty slicer. Either one of those two can, could be considered a really good barbecue knife. Cool thing about the hearty slicer and a gourmet prep knife is that the plastic sheath that goes with the gourmet prep knife, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm going to say this uh, incorrectly on in a recording, but I'm pretty sure that that same sheath fits both the hearty slicer and the gourmet prep knife. But having a gourmet prep knife or a hearty slicer and a sheath in your samples can be very helpful. The reason is, if you are going to a family gathering and you're going to a barbecue, here's what I don't want you to do, okay? I don't want you to do what most young people do, and that is be anti-social. Uh, you, you now have this job where mingling and networking and having adult conversations, even if it has nothing to do with Cutco, can be very beneficial to your business, right? Which, by the way, most adults that have businesses or work in businesses, uh, these networking opportunities are looked at as opportunities, not just a time to sit around and do nothing. Um, thank you, Sally. She did confirm that uh, the, uh, the sheath fits both. Uh, all right. So you, you want to be social when you go to these events, okay? And here's, what, here's some things that you wanna do that uh, are different than what a lot of young people, college students might do. You don't wanna be stuck on your phone somewhere in a corner or off, you know, trying to, be a, trying to be a loner, okay? This is an opportunity to use some of your skills, your rapport skills that you've been learning uh, to, to make a good impression on people. And there might be people that have seen you, you know, last year and the year before and the year before, let's say this is your first summer selling Cutco, and they remember you, uh, you know, growing up and they've seen you, you know, go from a little kid, uh, possibly, uh, you know, running around, you know, breaking things and, and making a mess to someone who just sits in the corner and doesn't talk very much. And it comes time to eat. You're the first one in line eating, you know, and then you go off off and, and, and uh, you know, be antisocial again. Well, this is a chance to have adult conversations, right? And, and one of the things you want to try to do is you want to try to be of value. You want to try to be of value to the hostess, the, the host or the hostess that's there. So ask, hey, what can I do to help? Right? This this might shock some of your some of your relatives if, if it's not something that you're used to doing. You know, how can I help? What can I do to help? And and they'll be like, whoa, what's going on? And so you're what you're doing is you're making this new impression, uh, this new you, right? And sometimes they'll they'll recognize that this difference and they can ask you, they might ask you, what got into you? So well I got this new job and you know I just I just have a different mindset about about you know my 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 time. Okay. Um 
And so I would work on uh, being, so, being more social. Okay, that's one of the first things. Okay, now if, if people are cooking and preparing, this is why if you had a barbecue set or if you had a, a hearty slicer, these, these would be really valuable. But whatever you do have, find a way to help food prep. Okay, if, if, you're, have, if you're doing burgers, for example, at your party, well, uh, if, to, if they're going to slice up some tomatoes, well, offer to grab, grab your trimmer, okay, and slice tomatoes, okay, or, or offer to let somebody else use it if they're slicing tomatoes. Or you can do it, and you can have a big smile on your face, and you can say to somebody maybe who hadn't seen Cutco, say, have you, have you ever used one of these Cutco knives yet, you know, and let them try it out, okay? Uh, so those are some do's. Here's another, here's a don't. Don't be annoying about your knives, okay? What I mean is when we become Cutco reps, right, and we go through training and we get all fired up about Cutco, right? We get all fired up about, you know, full tangs and, and nickel silver rivets and all these things. It's really easy to get to become annoying about it, right? Like it's all that you talk about ever. Uh, and so here's just a little life tidbit. When you're with your friends and you're, you're so excited about Cutco, don't just talk about Cutco all the time, okay? Because you'll turn them off on the job. You won't be, you think you're turning them on and trying to get them uh, excited about the job. You don't, okay? Uh, you, you alienate people because you're kind of talking in a different language, in a Cutco language. So learn how to not be annoying about the knives now. It's impossible for us now not to go to someone's house or go to a restaurant and look at the knives and, oh my gosh, wood handle knives. Ah, you know, we, we do that. We can't help it, okay? Um, but Keep it to yourself, right? And look for strategic opportunities to, to have those kinds of conversations, okay? I, I was, I, I look back and I'm, I'm sure I was so annoying my first summer, uh, maybe my first few years uh, in, in selling Cutco. Okay, so be social, okay? Look for opportunities to use your knives. Look for opportunities to help, okay? And, um, and, and let a conversation be created and you can ask certain questions and uh, kind of hopefully guide the, the conversation toward Cutco, um, but certainly don't just throw it out there, okay, and vomit on people, okay, that's what we call vomiting uh, your sales pitch on people, okay, especially if you haven't seen a Cutco demo, um, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to uh, tell them too much information because they'll think that they know everything and they won't, they won't even want to see a demo, okay. Now, when the conversation turns into inevitably, uh, it's going to happen if you're at a family gathering, and this could be Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or any family reunion, people are going to say, what are you up to these days? Okay. Now, especially if you put yourself in these social, social situations, it's way less likely to happen if you look, if you're off in the corner on your phone or something and people are looking at you and they're, oh, they probably, you know, they only want to talk. Okay. They're not going to, you're not going to get these questions, but if you can get to the question, uh, hey, what are you up to these days, right? Don't talk about Cutco first, right? Make that the second or third thing that you bring up, okay? You can say, well, I'm going to be going to school this fall and so-and-so school, or I'm going to be at my third year at, at, at uh, UCLA or wh whatever m your school is, right? If you talk about that, okay? And then you can say, and I'm working real hard this summer to try to earn a scholarship, okay? So don't, don't bust out Cutco. Leverage the scholarship if, if, of course, you're a student, okay? If you're not a student, then you have to find figure out another way to, to bring it up to leverage it. Okay, you might in, in that case you might just talk about Cutco. Yeah, I'm, I got got this uh, cool job to get some experience for my resume. Uh, ultimately, you know, my goal is to be a doctor. Or my goal is to be an architect. Or my goal is to do this particular thing. It's kind of like in the beginning of the demo. You know, how in the beginning of the demo we talk about why we chose to work with a company like Cutco. Well, you you kind of use that little bit uh, that little lead in. Okay. Um, and, uh, it, you know, for someone who's a, a single mom, they could, they could leverage the fact that, uh, yeah, well, I'm still, I'm still working with this, uh, with this organization, you know, with Cutco because it's the flexibility to help me take care of my kids, right? So whatever that little section of the demo is, you can kind of lay that out there in a non-intrusive, non-pushy way, okay? Uh, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of just overall networking skills that, that I'm talking about, okay? Now, you, you have two options from there, okay? If this is somebody that you don't see and they don't live close and they drove a long way to be where you are, or maybe you drove a long way to be where they are, it's not somebody that you see a lot, you might try to uh, ask them for a demo there on the spot that day. Um, 
you kind of have to gauge that. I would say that most of the time, most of the time, probably you're not looking to try to schedule a demo with them that day. But you, what you are trying to do is schedule a demo with them in the near future. Cool thing about 4th of July holiday, being on a Thursday, a lot of people are off tomorrow and they're off Saturday and they're off Sunday and they have a, they have a very long weekend and you can schedule Friday and Saturday and Sunday appointments directly from your, uh, from your holiday uh, party, okay, your gathering. So that would be one major objective. And of course, another major objective, there's lots of contests going on today, uh, would be to try to, to try to schedule them that, that, uh, that same day. Okay, but don't be too, don't be annoying and obnoxious about trying to get a, an appointment with them that day. Because you don't want to try to do a, a demo for people when there's a bunch of people around and a lot of distractions. Um, it's just it's just really hard. Those of you that have, you know have have tried to do that, do demos for people at work and at somebody else's house, they don't actually have their knives there to do the comparisons with. Uh, it's just not nearly as, as effective uh, doing it that way. Okay, so a you could try to try to schedule the same day if possible, um, but probably more likely you're going to schedule them for Friday or Saturday. Okay, or even Sunday. Um, now you're going to run across a lot of people who already are cut co-owners. Okay. So if you run across people who are cut co-owners, maybe that someone that you already sold to, okay. And you get in a conversation about your contest that you're in, right? This, this push period. So yeah, I'm in this huge contest right now. It ends next Wednesday and I'm really trying really hard to hit a pretty go a goal. That's pretty scary. Okay. And it's okay to talk about, talk to customers that you set some really scary goals. They'll actually be impressed with that. Okay. Uh, I have a goal um, uh, to help my team a certain amount, but it's a goal that, frankly, it scares me when I think about it. And, uh, you know, I'm tr really trying to pull out all the stops and, and work my butt off to see what's going on here. Um, just by the way, um, I know we had a wish list for you. If I'm really close to my, to my goal come next Monday or Tuesday uh, and the contest ends on Wednesday, would it be okay to call you and see if it's, the timing is right to get something on your wish list or maybe get all of it even if the timing was right? This is called the if I need it list, right? You should be doing this on all of your demos already, uh, but maybe you haven't been taught this to cope. So this is the if I need it list, right? And this is when you see a customer, you should always make sure you create some kind of a wish list, uh, even if they bought an ultimate set, right? There's still some things that they didn't get, whether it's flatware. And you want to learn, you, you want to ask your manager, for, hey, teach me about the flatware, teach me about the cookware. And there are little mini trainings that your manager can give you uh, with some talking points on each of these. If you want to get it from me, I've got a little script. It's a one page script. I've got it in either an outline form or just scripted out word for word about how to introduce the Cutco kitchen at the beginning of the demo. Okay. And the, um, uh, this will help you plant a seed with talking points on the flatware, the cookware, the gadgets, and the knives. Right. And so it's just a real quick little. Uh, intro part to your demo. And the, the idea is you're going to sell the customer on this concept of the Cutco kitchen, right? That doesn't mean they're going to write a check or give you a credit card for the whole Cutco kitchen right now. But the idea is you want them to want the whole Cutco kitchen. That helps you create big wish lists, okay? I apologize. I've got a little bit of an allergy this morning. And so if that is a sound that is gross, I apologize for that. Um, but uh, so when you have that wish list, the if I need it list is simply a um, hey, if I need it, we got to know that you have a goal, right? I've got this big contest that ends on blank day, right? Or maybe you're trying to, to set up a possibility for the last couple of days of the All-American Scholarship Race, right? If you're in the, in the hunt for something like that. If I need it, is it okay if I give you a call just to see if the timing might be right to get uh, some something or some of the things on your wish list, okay? That's the, that's the verbiage, right? You should do this on the end of every demo. You could do this at family gatherings for people who've already bought Cutco from you. Maybe there's a Cutco owner who you haven't actually seen yet, right? And you could just talk about your goals and talk about your scholarship. Talk about the things that you're trying to earn. Don't get all fired up about the knives so much. Get fired up about the, uh, the, 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 the doing appointments, right? And if you're in an office that is using the Century Club Scholarship, okay? Now, I know that not everybody's using this, but if you hear this, talk to your manager about the possibility of doing it. But a lot of offices have a, a Century Club Scholarship. Basically, it's just do 100 demos for the summer and you get a scholarship, right? Uh, and there's a sheet of paper, okay, that you can have where you mark 
like when you're um, it has a hundred little squares and when you're on your 15th demo, you say, Ms. Jones, you're my 15th appointment and you just mark through that, that 15 and they'll see how they're helping you progress along toward your, toward your goal, all right, toward, toward getting that scholarship. Right. And then they'll help, they'll give them more recommendations. It'll be really a lot easier to ask them if you could schedule another appointment for me. Uh, so you can piggyback if they know, that there's you know, there's uh, something tied to just strictly the number of presentations done, right? And by the hundred presentations, it's really hard not to earn ten thousand dollars in a summer um, for a rep that is a hundred presentations in a summer. Okay, uh, so it's almost impossible not to earn six thousand. Uh, in fact, I don't. I've never seen anybody that did hundred demos that didn't earn six thousand or more. Okay, most of them earn ten thousand or more. Okay, so um, that is uh, that is the deal. Let me see. There's one other point I was going to make. Um, if any questions, by the way, you can ask a question on the chat if you have any questions. I think I've covered most of the key key things. Oh, now I remember. Okay, and there's one thing I didn't want to. I don't want to forget. Don't want to miss. This is a really great day to introduce Utopian Coffee because this is a super quick conversation. Right, it's a super quick conversation. And it's a really inexpensive little thing. It helps you toward your goals. It helps you toward your scholarship. Helps you toward the push period, um, and it helps you toward all the summer contests, all kinds of really good things like that. Let me get off this. You have to see that. That's gross. Um, so, Utopian Coffee. Okay, how do you introduce the idea of Utopian Coffee? Well, it's easy, obviously, if anybody's drinking coffee, you know, at the thing. Um, when you're talking about your goals, or of course, if they're drinking coffee, you know, you could say, hey, have you ever tried Utopian? Okay, it's real simple, like that. And they'll be like, what is it? Okay, then you, want, then you can explain it to them. And I'll give you a little, a couple of talking points about Utopian coffee before we wrap up here. Um, but if you're talking to people about their goals and they, you know, you know and, you know, Cutco comes up and, and maybe they, you know, they say, oh, I've got, you know, really, really great knives. And you can, of course, try to say, oh, that's great. It doesn't take very long. If you already have a bunch of knives and you're not interested in Cutco, then I still get credit for the appointment. Um, you could uh, you could talk about that. And of course, usually they end up buying some Cutco, right? Because they, they may have really good knives, but they don't have super shears, right? They don't have a spatula spreader. Uh, and, you know, we got an amazing ice cream scoop. And there's all kinds of things that have nothing to do with knives that they could be inter interested in. And even garden tools, right? And if you happen to be at somebody's house, another nugget that, that you notice they have a really nice garden, okay? And you're there for their for the holiday time got to bring up the garden tools. Hey, do you do the garden work yourself or does somebody else do this? This is beautiful, right? And, and compliment them on their garden. Okay. You guys have heard me say this before. If you've been around me for any period of time, when you're talking to a customer, if they have a nice yard, they either spend a lot of time in that yard working on it, or they spend a lot of money for somebody else to spend a lot of time in there. Either way, if you don't compliment them on their, the, the, their landscaping, you just missed a tremendous opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to build a good connection with that customer. So, and then, of course, if they do the work themselves, then super shears and all the garden tools are really amazing, uh, amazing things for them to be able to use in their garden. All right, back to coffee. Uh, so uh, have you heard of Utopian Coffee? Okay, that's a one way to, to bring it up. Okay. Um, and uh, um, let me give you the talking points on, on the coffee. Okay, so, oh, yeah, Utopian Coffee. Now, if you're not a coffee drinker, then you got to just be, you be frank about it. Don't say, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I love it, right? If you don't drink coffee, don't say that, okay? Say, I'm not really a coffee drinker, but the people that the people that drink this uh, and every month, they say it's amazing, okay? And I will t I'll be the one to tell you, okay? Here's my Utopian coffee right here. I started drinking this about six months before we created our partnership because I heard that this might be coming. And I met with the owner. Just so happened he was in LA. He was in Ohio or something. It was happened that he was in LA. He's got like a summer... Uh, I had a summer thing going on there. And uh, so we met and I met the guy. He's a ge very genuine guy, uh, Brent Maxwell. And uh, he, uh, you know, he, he loves what he's doing. He loves to the, the, have their giving back to all these communities all over the world. If you don't, if you haven't learned about Utopian Coffee, go to the Utopian Coffee website. Okay. Go to utopiancoffee.com and, uh, and check it out. Check out their story. Watch some of the videos. They, they give a lot of money back to the local communities. They take, take these poppy farms that are making you know making drugs and they and they convert them they they help people convert them into coffee farms so they can have legitimate uh, legitimate business and not you know contribute to the illegal drug trade i mean it's pretty pretty amazing what they're doing so you can of course use those as talking points but the talking points when i sell coffee and i've sold a lot of coffee and i have i have a dozen people or so on subscriptions something like that so every month i get these little uh you know these little 17 dollar 
uh, or fourteen dollar increases in CPO. You know, every every other week it's like two coffees or whatever. Um, so I have like five hundred or eight hundred dollars or something like that worth of coffee sales for the year. So, uh, oh yeah, Utopian Coffee. Let me tell you what's really great about it. Okay, first of all, it's super fresh. Okay, it, what that means is, um, here, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to get in my role play mode. It's super fresh. So most coffee that you buy uh, at a grocery store, it was roasted like six months or eight months before. Uh, even at Starbucks, you know, it's, it's several months before people are buying it because it's sitting in a warehouse. Utopian, they uh, roast the coffee every single week and they ship it to customers, usually within uh, 24 or 48 hours of the time that it's roasted. Okay, And every bag has a little sticker on it that says what day it was roasted. Okay, you can you can tell it just by smelling. You can tell the difference. Okay, that's one point. Uh, and another great thing about Utopian Coffee is that it comes from a different part of the world every single month. Like one month it might be from Burundi, and then the next month it might be from um, uh, from Kenya, and the next month it might be from Guatemala, and the next month it might be from China. Uh, they 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 find these uh, fields small small fields all over the world and they, they basically find some of the best coffees uh, that you find. So it's really cool because it's different every month. It's kind of exciting to open the package every month. And they all have a little different kind of a varietal, a little different kind of flavor profile. And it says it right on the package, the flavor profiles, uh, if you've ever seen them. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Once a month, you'll see, because I open mine on Instagram or on Snapchat and, and I put it on Instagram and Facebook every month. And I get sales that way, by the way, just by you know, show, showing people open it and I always turn it over and smell it. And, uh, it's awesome. Uh, it is, uh, it, you know, all the things that you look for in fair trade coffee and all those kind of things. Um, it, it meets all those general standards, of course, but the two biggest, big, biggest points, okay. Is the freshness of it. And the fact that it comes from a different place every year, if you can just get those two things down, that's great. If you can add in the social, socially responsible aspect of utopian, the company, that's awesome as well. Uh, I call it Cutco Coffee. When people ask me about it, have you tried Cutco Coffee? Don't you don't even have to say Utopian because they have tried Cutco Coffee. Yeah, we partnered with a company called Utopian. That's a good way to introduce it. Uh, and then some of the more minor points is it's a subscription, okay? And people can get a uh, get a subscription. It's uh, once a month. Uh, it is um, far more far more fresh and a little bit less expensive than. Starbucks premium subscription service, right? There are more than one sub premium coffee subscription services. Utopian's priced right in the middle, basically, certainly less expensive than some. You can do a price comparison if you want to print out the Starbucks premium subscription uh, off the internet. You can use that if you want to put this into your demos. Um, and uh, there was one other point that I say about the coffee, the premium subscription. Uh, Oh, the customer service. Okay. And the customer service is amazing. Just like Cutco, 100% money back guarantee. If someone doesn't like it, then, uh, you know, just uh, let the company, let uh, Utopian know and they'll, you know, they'll refund people's money. And uh, the, the only way Cutco would partner with them is they would agree to have customer service that rivals the customer service of Cutco. And there's no contracts for the subscription. Someone could try three months and then, and then cancel. So it's not like you gotta, you gotta have to try it for a year or anything like that. Okay. Um, so if you have someone that wants to buy some Utopian coffee, uh, get their get all their uh, information, let them put in the order, and then you can send a um, <clears throat> send an email to the customer service at Utopian Coffee, and you can tell them that they want a subscription, okay? And you can kind of facilitate that. Otherwise, they'll just sell them one bag, and the Utopian will send a customer an email that says, "Hey, would you like to make this a subscription?" Well, sell the subscription on the front end, right? And let and let Utopian know that it's on the front end, <clears throat> and um, what I do is I actually have a, a specific, um, well, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, I have a relationship with the, with, the, with the owner, so I just make sure that, you know, they, they always turn my, uh, my orders into subscriptions with customer consent, of course. Okay, that's the, that's the key thing. Uh, all right, so those are some ideas. Hopefully you got a few nuggets in there, and I will stop the recording, and if there's any other questions, I'm happy to, to take them offline.